Hello and welcome to episode three of Sequin Girly Creates. This week I'm going to talk to you about things I'm wearing that I've made, plans I've got, shopping I've done and a couple of bits of sort of ideas I've had and just take you along on my journey of creating and sewing and making. Welcome back if you've joined me having seen my other ones. If you haven't there are obviously the previous episodes and there are my make nine plans and my make nine update as well. You will also see I've done a series of shorts some of which I will expand into long form to tell you more about them and one of those is this jacket which I did a short on and I'll talk more about today. Thank you for joining me on my journey. I'd love it if you could subscribe please leave comments below and also if you'd like to see more sort of stills and more live updates of what I'm doing through the week you can find me on Instagram at sequingirly and I'd welcome you there and here. Thank you if you've come from Instagram to here and thank you if you've gone back the other way. Well welcome to this week's episode. So let's start with what I'm wearing. So I have on my completely made from scratch quilted jacket which has like this and then it has a lining like this and I also have on a me made dress I'll just stand up so you can see my me made dress and it has short sleeves and my jacket like this with binding and so on so I'll start by talking about the quilted jacket I'm sure you've all there's plenty of videos out there to watch on how to make one there are also plenty to buy. There's lots of amazing sellers making them from vintage quilts, but I couldn't find one. And if you've watched my previous videos, you will know I love shopping in charity shops, thrifting, finding things. And I'd longed to find a quilt I could turn into a jacket and I just couldn't. So in the end, I was like, do you know what? I'm just going to make one. I have quite a big fabric collection and in that collection, is a lot of fat quarters and quilting cotton because I used to make a lot of bags and wallets and zip pouches and that cotton is perfect for those because it's got a bit of structure and I'd stopped for lots of reasons including the fact that everybody I know has got enough zip pockets and bags I couldn't get them anymore but also because I'd just sort of fallen out of love with it as well I used to make them for the school I worked for and sell them at their summer fair and things like that and it had just stopped for lots of different reasons, including the fact that I was just too busy and I'd lost the love for it. So I thought I would go through and have a big sort out because I had a lot of fabric I really loved. And I started to gather all the greens together. And then I realised I needed something to go with the green. And this is when I started to find the lilacs that you'll see here. But also there was some fabrics that were green and had a flower print on them. And you can see a piece here. I bought it many years ago in a shop in Great Mizzenden. I don't think that shop is there anymore. It used to be called Rainbow Silks and I used to love that shop. That is just amazing. And they're all the way through, there's a fern one here. They're sort of, um, uh, oh, they're like the snap, no, not snapdragons, the bindweed ones, the granny granny pop out of bed, like those. And then there was sort of another one down here, like the violas. And I knew I wanted to include those. So I worked out and I laid out all the colours that I thought it went together. But because of the fabrics that I loved so much that I didn't want to cut and lose them, as you know when you lay out a pattern, I actually sewed lots and lots of squares together, made long strips, but then I pieced them together over the pattern to make sure I got the fabrics I wanted over the pattern and then stitched the strips together so that I had the pieces I wanted and then I would cut and move other bits to fill in the gaps and I actually cut out the front panel like that the other front panel uh, which includes the arm in the pattern I will put in the links below the Etsy shop I bought the pattern from and the same with the back I did that by laying out the strips and getting it just slightly larger than the pattern and I traced the pattern I'm definitely a tracer. I know that it uh, divides the sewing community, but I am a tracer. And then I put the wadding on the back and I actually used an all Achilles duvet for the lining 
that I bought many years ago because it was like reducing somewhere like TK Maxx there was a black mark on a part of it but it's perfect for lining because it's soft because it's that lovely duvet it's soft cotton but also it's still got a bit of structure once I'd got the shapes I wanted I then actually then did the quilting and I did sort of wiggly lines in a grid pattern but I wiggled in both directions so that it didn't look straight I then started to try it on and I realised it was too deep so I took it in here I actually decided and I cut and took the back in because it was just too wide for me so there's actually a seam right down the middle at the back but I'm glad I did it and you can see it there I've surged all of the um, inside hems and edges I decided not to bias by them because I didn't want it any stiffer and then I didn't love how it was looking so I ended up self-drafting and adding a collar got the all Achille on the other side and I had some fabric left as well some strips and I could use that regrets are it is a little bit short in the sleeve not massively but just a little bit I had shortened it a bit because the sleeves looked so long but I just did it a bit too much and I'm not sure I fully love the shape it is designed so you can do a tie like this or a button but it means that when it hangs open, it hangs really wide. So I like it, but I don't love it. So I think next time I'm going to get out all of my fat courses and my scraps. I'm going to do orangey, yellowy, sort of warm one. And I'm going to try a different pattern. It's perfect for this time of year, although I'm a little bit hot right now. So I'm going to take it off. Um, but it is something that is... I didn't do the super thick wadding because I wanted it to be more of a light one. And now I've got it here, I can show you some of the, the gorgeous fabric on the back. And I'm loving that I can wear all these special fabrics that for years I've been kept folded up in one of those shoe storage things hanging in my cupboard and just not using because I didn't know what to do with them. I didn't want to ruin them. And now I can wear them and enjoy them. So I'm really happy about that. But it's just not quite you can see there it's like a i think it's called a grown on sleeve is it where the sleeves part of the pattern i just don't 100 percent love it so then on to what i'm wearing which i'll put a picture in here of my dress now this is a completely self-drafted dress you may have if you've been on instagram seen that i posted pictures of this but also made a crop t-shirt for my stepdaughter in this. It's a stretch jersey uh, leopard print with like, it's like pinks and yellows and blues for the inside of it, like pastels. And I think it's from Becky Lane Sews. It is more of a t-shirt, but it's quite structured. It's not flowy, but it's not thick jersey. It's perfect for a dress like this. And it's actually got raglan sleeves. So the hem is up here. Never made raglan before. I decided to do a sew recreate, which is what this is. And it was from this vintage dress. Now I have quite a vintage dress collection. I'm trying to slim it down. Uh, this vintage dress to me looks like it's probably 60s or 70s. So here's the original dress doesn't look great hung up it's got a zip all the way down the back and this amazing collar uh, but when you wear it it's just structured in such a way that it just is really really flattering and I like the collar but I really didn't want to put a zip in so I knew if I went for jersey this has got a little bit of stretch but not enough and then I started looking at the construction which now, whenever I'm looking at my shop bought clothes and my vintage clothes, I'm always looking at the construction. So I noticed, even though it was a stretch fabric, it had darts in, which I thought was interesting. And then I started to look at how the sleeve worked and I realised it was a raglan. And I remembered that in the Tilly and the Button stretch book, there's a raglan t-shirt in there. It's like a long sleeve one, which is like, um, it's sort of colour blocking white and black. I can't remember what it's called. I'll put it in the link below. So I thought I'd have a little look at the construction of how you sew that together and you sort of sew it together flat and then do the neck. And so I thought I'd give it a go. So I laid this out. I have a big bit of wood I put down in my sitting room when I'm doing this thing. So I laid out the fabric in half, did the front, tucked everything in, cut that out and obviously allowed a seam allowance. 
then did the same to the back and obviously it was a little bit tricky because around the neck I didn't want that I wanted more of this v-neck it does have a v-neck at the front but obviously it's got this construction which I will have a go at another time and so I just sewed on like you do the, the neck band uh, nearly made that too tight but luckily now I've washed it and ironed it it's fine did the raglan sleeve so it comes in here and then fitted and then just down I did the twin no did I do twin needle what did I do for the hem I think I did a little zigzag there did I twin oh and twin needle on the hem at the bottom and I'm really happy with it it's just one of those comfy I think who would describe it as a secret pyjama so I'll just stand up again so you can see I did the darts actually in the side there, which I'm really pleased I did. So there was a sew recreate. <laughs> I was a bit scared because this is lovely fabric, but I had, I've started buying plenty rather than just enough when I'm buying fabrics I like, because then I can make a little bit of an error and I've still got enough. And actually I've been able to make this and a crop t-shirt for my stepdaughter. I'm wearing a, a, a vintage necklace. I collect these every charity shop I ever go in. I'm always looking for this style in every colour. I will do a short sometime. I think I now have one in every colour. There's a couple of different styles, but this is a gorgeous pink one that picks out the pink in here. And my long missed Topshop earrings. I used to have a little ritual of a couple of times a year going to the big Topshop on Oxford Street. They had an amazing jewellery selection and just buying really interesting jewellery. I really miss that and I know that there's now Topshop online through ASOS or whatever but the jewellery is just not the same. The the London one used to have the best jewellery selection. So let's talk about things that I purchased this week. So in one of my previous videos I talked about the fact that I realised just having white and black serger hem wasn't good enough because Something like this is white on the inside, so surgering is fine, but I was stitching a purple t-shirt and <laughs> the white stood out like a sore thumb and so with the black. So I had a look around and I did, I don't like to do this, I buy most of my things from small independent shops or local town shops or charity shops, but I ended up shopping on Amazon and I was looking for something called Moon Thread and I know a lot of people talk about how Moon Thread is quite useful when you need a lot. So I thought I'd give it a try and actually Minerva's shop on Amazon had what I was looking for and so I got four red and four green so I can put these on my serger. I thought it'd be a good experiment to see how I go and they were one pound something each so it didn't feel too shocking and it did come with a Minerva leaflet quite interestingly, a, a project planner. I've not seen that. Um, which I like and learn to snow with Minerva and there's 20% off Dashwood Studios so they came in the parcel that came from Amazon via Minerva so happy with that and then on Rainbow Fabrics they had an autumn winter 40% off which may have gone up to 50% at some point and I've been watching and watching sort of their boiled wool and this is wool and it says it's like poly backed so it is different on the back to the front but look at the colour of this and then the pink so this is like an icy pink and icy blue look at them together so one of my late night thoughts was either sort of a pencil skirt and jacket or a colour blocked coat it is really heavy but I've never sewn with anything like this I do need to think about whatever I say with it would need lining, probably if it's a coat, but I just felt those two would work so well together. Probably won't get around to saying those now till the autumn, but I've got them and I am trying to decide what to do about washing them. Because if it's a coat, I probably wouldn't wash it, so I don't really need to, well, I might have a dry clean, but I probably wouldn't. So I don't need to worry about shrinkage. But if I made a pencil skirt, I would. So I just need to think about that. But, oh, look, the colours go with what I'm wearing today. Let's not pretend I don't like mint green and pink together. And while I was getting those, I've looked at this several times, and it's a polka dot twill. I think, if I remember rightly, it's yes, it's got an absolute sort of 
slight stretch in it yeah so you can see it there it's like you could wear, make jeans from this but i'm thinking pencil skirt or structured pencil dress don't know how oh, i don't think it is see-through which is good no it's not see-through at all actually um i love polka dot and i think that would be great and I'm really trying to challenge myself not to just keep sewing my jersey and cotton poplin, which I've got a lot of. Um, so this one, I think, would be a good one to just... Make. If you've seen my Make 9 update, you've seen I made a pencil skirt. I think this could make a great pencil skirt. I keep thinking about making the and jackets. I do need to try and get away from that. Oh, you can uh, see my tattoo today. If you are interested in my tattoo, I will pop up at some point. A shorts to talk about it but the bit you can see here is a book with colour coming out and yes there is something else and I'll save that for another day but there's a book at the bottom oh look mint green and then something else I managed to get hold of this week was I went on another trip to the Oxfam Superstore in Oxford and often I find great fabric in there and I found this I'll just hold it up so you can see the colour there it's it's definitely a cotton but it must be a weave because it's the same on both sides uh yes actually i can tell that by the threads and then let's have a look i think there is so it's that not so wide fabric isn't it it's that it's not the 160 i would say i've probably got two meters of that so thinking about what to do with that, I think that could make a nice structured top. Can't keep making pencil skirts, but it would make a great skirt. So this was three or four pounds. Uh, always worth looking out. I always have great success in the Oxfam Superstore. And, and that was my find. There was other things, but I try to limit myself to only things I really love. So then let's talk about some patterns I've got this week. McCall's have been having um, some sales on their McCall's, their simplicity and so on and um, it's really hard to resist when they're half price so I did get a couple so I got M7950 which is this summer dress I really like the look of this dress here with the straps buttons all the way down the front and look at the way the stripes have been used differently downwards across and the pockets as well I'm thinking a lot about what I do with this because I've got you've seen my make nine if you've seen my make nine plans there is a blue flower vintage sheet which has got a bit of stiffness to it and I wonder if that would be a great dress to do in that I do like these but I just don't think that's for me and I'd get really annoyed with the ties at the front but there is lots of options down here but I do really like view C with the placket down the front but not the tie just the plain sleeves and I do like the fact that there is like panelling and if you look at that top the way the direction of the stripes go it's really clever uh, so something to think about for if I've got a stripe in my make known plans I've got that seersucker as well where we looked at the lines just not sure if it's got the structure it needs suggested fabrics Cotton blend, gingham, poplin, linen, uh, or scalloped border print. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? At the bottom of that. And notions, seven buttons or 11 buttons. It says for view C, for a 60 inch fabric, I'd need two and seven eighths, so three meters, and some fusible interfacing. I wonder if that's a lined bodice because if it is that would give the seersucker a bit more um, support and structure let's have a look bodice back bodice side bodice front shoulder straps pocket skirt front skirt back skirt facing mm. Don't think so. Okay, something to think about there to choose the right fabric because it looks like it needs a bit of structure, but definitely might be one of my make nines. Then another one I got was the McCall 7974. I really like this one here, which is View D. 
I like the way it's got like the fitted bit and then the bits with the gather and a little um, sort of collar. And this one says cotton blends, crepe lawn or chamoose. And it's buttons again and some elastic. I think that's only if you do the sleeve. Oh, there it is for this one. I wonder where the elastic is. Oh, that's an interesting sleeve. Look at C, that's why you need the elastic there in the sleeve. And for the view I like, which is view D, nearly four metres needed. So I have to think about which one. There must be a lot of gathering in that skirt then. Um, but that could be... Have to think carefully. You definitely sent a lot of drape and not much structure, but really like the look of that. And then I got Simplicity 2917, which looks like this. And I really like the look of this one, view A, because even though I'm not a big fan of this way they've styled it in this fabric, all the panels, if I show you the back all the panels that would create the shaping i really like the look of that and it's quite interesting in the top as well and there's a pencil skirt in the pattern as well which is interesting so i would need a zipper that's why i get a bit scared i've only done one zipper so far and um, some twill tape i would need for view a just over three and a half meters so again it's quite fabric hungry but i really like the structure and the shape i think that could be extremely flattering I pick carefully what's the difference between c and a then i think it's shorter I have to pick carefully what fabric so it didn't look old-fashioned and then the last one i got in that selection was s9326 which looks like this and I really like view, well, I like view A and B, actually, with that side split. And it says chemise, crepe de chillon, rayon, silky types. View A, so that's without the ruffle, could also be cotton blends, linen blends, sateen. Uh, so if you've got the, the, the frilly bit, you would need a sort of a more drapey fabric. <laughs> it's another invisible zipper and if I did view A which I like I like the square neckline I would need just over two meters it's got sort of panelling which I like the look of and I really like the look of the square neck I think all of these I'm going to have to do a toil before I do the real one I wonder what that would be good in chemise, silky types could do linen, linen blend, sateen. I did show you some stretchy sateen. I had it depends. I wonder if I could make it in that white polka dot or whether that'd be too stiff. I think that would be too stiff. Um, but I really liked the look of that. And then in the Oxfam Superstore, I got New Look 6679. This one for £2.99. And this one says it is suitable for silky types, crepe, crepe de chine, sateen, poplin, soft weight, lightweight linens, ponte, and for view, I like view A, but I don't like the length of the sleeve. So I'd either shorten the sleeve or do this longer sleeve. And it's got like a sort of a folded tuck for the darts at the front. So probably do view B, I need two metres. Now I really like, I looked at this, I watched a, a review someone put on Minerva of these tucks. You've got to be careful not to create bulk. So I was thinking very carefully about what fabric to use. I've read the instructions on this already. And last year I bought this fabric from Rainbow Fabrics. And it, it's, it's sort of heavy, which I think would pull it into shape, but also extremely drapey so it's sort of got it's 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 got body but it's drapey and I feel like that you can see the way the folds there it wouldn't create bulk I love this it's like a mixture of animal prints so I think this is the one to try this pattern I think I'm going to go for it I do think I have to have a zip again do I yes 
this could be my first attempt with the zip. I when the when the sleeves are like this they look great, but when they're worn, look how they drape down. And because this fabric's heavy, they would drape down. But that sleeve just looks really dull. So I need I'd have to think really carefully about the sleeve because like it could make or break the dress. So I think I'd make the rest of the dress and then really think about the sleeve afterwards. But I'm really thinking that for that as a plan for this week coming. So other things I've been up to. I have submitted pictures for the Sew April Blouse Challenge. And it was two patina blouses, funnily enough. And one you haven't seen, so you could go and have a look for that, which I will talk about in another episode. And one with the collar. I definitely don't feel when you've got a, a cotton that you need the interfacing in the collar. Um, it's made it too stiff. I've washed it and ironed it and I still feel it's too stiff. But this week coming, I think I am going to have a go at making that dress with the pattern I bought from the Oxfam charity shop. I um, will be sharing my selfless sews that I did for my stepdaughter Tilly. I think I mentioned those in a previous video. And um, Me Made May is something that I'll do a separate video for Me Made May. Uh, it's it's happening right now. I need to think about what I want to do for also a bird flying past there. Uh, I noticed people having lots of thoughts about it and I need to take some time and think. A bit like my Make Nine, I might just be slightly behind everybody this year. But that's okay. We're all on our own journey. We're all taking our own time over what we do. I will show you next week some buttons I found in a charity shop yesterday. I haven't got them with me, but I'll show you them next week. They're just the cutest little buttons I've ever found. I've never seen anything like them. There was only two, but I couldn't resist them. I um, will put up a short about making the patchwork jackets. If you want to see a sort of a making process, there is a short that you can watch about that. And also I'm going to share a video soon on some of my thrift flips, which are items of clothing that I already owned prior to my breast reduction surgery or bits of clothing I found and loved in charity shops and made them suit myself or they were my partner's clothing or something like that. There will be a short showing um, me turning some men's shirts into a dress and there's lots of thrift flips so I think I'll do a whole video about thrift flipping that's quite difficult to get my teeth in for and also um, just going through and sorting out my vintage clothing collection and what I'm going to do with some of it and so there will be some at some point that I will share for sale uh, so lots of sort of sorting and thinking and keep watching out because I will keep releasing shorts of things that I like to create and make because I don't just sew I paint, I like to create other sort of crafted things as well and I've also done some furniture flipping as well. So we won't really talk about this hugely in my videos but they are there if you want to see why it's called Sequin Girly Creates because it's not just about Sequin Girly sewing. Love it if you could subscribe and thank you out there to all the bloggers who vloggers who have inspired me. I'll pop a link of a couple of people in the information below so that you can go and find them yourselves if you don't already know them and as I mentioned at the beginning if you'd like to follow me on Instagram I'm Sequin Girly you can see um, sort of more stills and up close photos of some of my makes and often on my stories little snip snippets of things I'm in the middle of sewing sort of sneak peeks that you can see there thank you for coming along on my journey and I hope you have a good week